Hey, welcome to the Viewmasters Twin Peaks Fire Walk with me. My name is Eric. My name is Joe. Hello, Joe. Hello, Eric. How's it going? Oh, fine. Yeah? How's it going with you? It's going pretty good. Okay. It is uh, an early record for us. It is. A yeah. day and time earlier than normal. Yeah. Like Very strange. Four hours earlier than normal. Yeah. <laughs> and a day. And a day, yeah. So 28, so 28 hours earlier. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. So, uh, uh, I wish I could say that uh, we would do a better show, but I can't make that promise. Neither can I. <laughs> I've had very little sleep and very little caffeine. Yeah. A lot of sugar, though. Mm hmm. We did have some good cookies. We did. While we were watching the Twin Peaks movie. Indeed. And, uh, which is weird because, uh, in the Twin Peaks television program, there's often, you know, donuts and pastries and whatever. Yeah. Uh, not so, not so much in this movie. No. Yeah. 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 Uh, there's, 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 there's some pie usually being had, some, mm -hmm. some coffee. Uh, very little in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. just upsetting. Very, very few of the trappings of the show uh, are included in the movie. That, yes. Yes, that is true. Yeah. Because, because that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. Yeah. So. I'm just, I don't know where I'm at. Yeah, I, the, so the movie, uh, for the listener, is a, a prequel to the television series. Yes. Uh, mainly dealing with, like, the last week, yeah. probably, of Laura Palmer's life. I would say that's accurate. Um, and then there's a little bit at the beginning about uh, Bob's first murder, uh, which I can't remember the name of, of the person who was murdered. Uh, Teresa Banks. That's right, Teresa Banks. Because for some reason, that was superimposed on the screen as her... <laughs> Plastic wrapped body flew floated by. Yeah, and I and I honestly I wanted to like, is that the name of a location? Uh, yeah, because <laughs> I mean, Teresa Banks, Oregon. Sure. Yeah, I mean <laughs> uh, they are on a uh, river or a lake, and, mm -hmm. and those things often have banks. Yes, outer uh, outer banks. Yes, etc. Um, or I thought, you know, this was also very close to the beginning. Maybe there was just a stray credit. Yeah. Uh, I, <laughs> Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah, that was weird. Yes, it was. And sort of unnecessary. Completely. Yeah. Completely. <laughs> but then again, I could describe a lot of things in this movie. Like the whole thing? <laughs> Most of it. I think that's where I've landed on this. I believe I'm pretty much falling in the same category. Yeah. Uh, turns out, uh, Laura Palmer's life... Uh, really unnecessary to know about anything about mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Uh, you know, she's far more interesting in death than than she was in life. Like a Barry Allen. Like a Barry <laughs> Allen or a Jason Todd. Or a Jason Todd. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and say not Bucky. No. I agree. Yeah. Winter Soldier is a great character. Yes. <laughs> Spoilers. Bucky is a Winter Soldier. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's weird. I'm sorry to already go off no, on a tangent fine. here. That's fine. You know, watched uh, Winter Soldier uh, with my girlfriend for like our third date. Mm -hmm. uh, she she had not seen the previous Captain America movie, or or you know knows anything about the character or whatnot. Uh, and for me, being you know the comic fan that I am, like I go into the movie as like Captain America, Winter Soldier. We're gonna see Bucky. He's gonna be a badass and. You know, evil and whatever, and Captain America is going to fight him, and it's going to be heartbreaking. And it didn't even occur to me that there would be people that did not know <laughs> that Bucky is the Winter Soldier. Yeah, yeah, at That's all. That's true, and it's sort of not a well kept secret, even in the marketing for right? the movie. Yeah, it seemed like it was pretty obvious. Yeah. All right. Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is weird. I'm sorry, just that. No, that. that's it no, was just yeah. No apology. I mean, she's. <laughs> She still enjoyed the movie, not yeah. knowing any of the, the backstory. Cause well, it's it, a good movie. It's a very good movie. Uh, but yeah, it just never occurred to me that, uh, <laughs> that, that there would be people who just did not know that. Yeah. Yeah. Which makes me wonder if there were people who saw this movie who never saw Twin Peaks. Yeah, I was thinking about that too while we were watching it. Yeah. That would probably be really weird. Incredibly weird. <laughs> 
Because it's not great having seen all of Twin Peaks. Nope. <laughs> so it's probably really not great yeah. having not seen any of Twin Peaks. I could easily see why people hated this movie Yeah, when it came out. Yeah. Because it's not very good. It's not very good. Uh, and, and like we said, it's sort of wholly unnecessary. Uh, and it does nothing to advance. Or it does, like... Like very like point zero zero one percent of advancing the plot lines from the end of the series, right? It, and it almost seems tacked on. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, entirely. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't give us a better understanding of any of the characters, uh, Laura Palmer, or any of the living characters that uh, were regulars on mm-hmm. the show. Yeah. Um. It. it Introduces new plot lines that uh, will just forever not be explained. Yeah. Such as uh, Special Agent uh, Chet Diamond. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, which one was he? Was he... Uh, he was, was Chris he? Isaac. Chris Isaac. Okay, yes. not, not David Bowie. Yeah. Or were they the same character? Ooh, I don't know. I don't know either. Yeah. I didn't catch all their names. Uh, David Bowie, his name was uh, Philip Jeffries. Okay, that's right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what a waste of Bowie. Yeah, David Bowie's right? in this movie. <laughs> David fucking Bowie. For like 15 seconds. Totally. Yeah. Uh, and, and I did a little bit of reading up. He apparently, it took him like five days to film that scene, of which, again, 15 seconds he appears in. Yeah. And I might also add, looking like he just stepped backstage from his uh, tour, mm-hmm. whatever was happening at the time. I believe this may have been the Tin Machine era. Okay. <laughs> 1991, 92. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just being David Bowie. 1990 era David Bowie. Yeah. And just showed up in this movie for <laughs> little to no reason. <laughs> Speaking in a horrific southern accent. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. Uh... <laughs> Just introducing new characters yep. that don't go anywhere. Like Kiefer Sutherland's Kiefer character. Kiefer Sutherland's character. Chris Isaac's character doesn't really go anywhere. Nope. And is the most he boring. Because he literally disappears. Yeah, and yeah. is just the most boring character. Like, he has no personality at all. I'm willing, mostly, well, I mean, the character itself is not that great, but I'm also willing to bet mostly it's because uh, that guy is a terrible actor. It did really seem like he was just sort of walking through it. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, <laughs> and uh, and it seemed like everyone else around him uh, had to lower themselves to match, <laughs> like Kiefer Sutherland or Harry Dean Stanton, yeah, who was often always awesome. Well, I thought Harry Dean Stanton was all right; he was fine, <laughs> uh, but not at a level that I'm used to seeing Harry Dean Stanton. That's because fair. again, I feel like he had to match uh, the lows of a Chris Isaac. That's fair, Chris Isaac. Go back to your dirty music videos <laughs> about wicked games. Does he make dirty videos? Uh, I don't know, the, like Laura Palmer does the, in this movie? Uh, I don't know that she made a dirty video. Oh, the whole movie is a dirty video. That's true. <laughs> uh, that is one thing. We get to see a lot of Laura Palmer's boobs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. She's attractive. Yeah. yeah. It's fine. <laughs> Plus one for the movie. I mean... <laughs> Let's make some pros and cons. Here. Okay, okay. So pros, <laughs> pros. Uh, Boobs. Gordon Cole. Gordon Cole is in it. Yeah, that's, that's cool. Uh, Albert is in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very briefly. Yeah, uh, but still a, a welcome presence. Yeah, I think. Yeah, is Miguel Ferrer. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dale Cooper is in it for about ten minutes. He is. Yep. Yeah. Um, Didn't want to do it. Nope. <laughs> um. Um, boobs. Boobs. Uh, Cheryl Lee boobs. Yeah. And yeah. Moira Kelly boobs. Moira briefly. Kelly. Our, our replacement Donna. Replacement Donna, yeah. <laughs> Moira Kelly of Cutting Edge and possibly the West Wing fame. Oh, okay. No. I'm glad you knew that she was in something else. She's in other stuff. I, I know you're a big uh, Cutting Edge fan. I am, yeah. Love it. Yeah, not even joking. <laughs> Not even trying to make a joke. I've, no, I've seen that movie once, uh, but Jenny really loves it. Okay. So. I, I just, for some reason, seem to remember you just 
For not for like weeks, just talking about cutting edge. <laughs> I don't think so. No, I don't think that I'm really happened. Sure. No. Was it bringing on? Is that what you're thinking of? No, no. <laughs> I mean, is, I, is I just perfect. No, because uh, I like a lot of bad movies. Sure. I mean, I, I distinctly remember just a lot of talk about cutting edge. This may have been around the time where you really got into Pretty Little Liars. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. So what I'm hearing you say is that uh, you know that I watched the movie once <laughs> and maybe tweeted about it twice <laughs> that evening. <laughs> Therefore, it was a weeks-long obsession yep. with The Cutting Edge. Like three or four weeks. Okay. You just watched The Cutting Edge over and over again. Got it. Got this it. is what happens when you take holiday breaks from your job <laughs> for two weeks. <laughs> You know that I've been watching Batman <laughs> this and, year, and that's all. That's true. This year, okay. this year, last year, <laughs> last year probably would have been Superboy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> no, I've seen that movie once. I remember very little about it, but right. I know that Maura Kelly is in it. Okay. Well, she's attractive. Yeah, she's fine. She's an okay actress. Sure. She is on par with a Laura Flynn Boyle. Maybe yeah. slightly better. Maybe slightly better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of bad acting in this movie. There's a lot of bad acting in this movie. Um, uh, Ray Weiss is in this movie. Yeah. That's a pro. R- returning in as my uh, Leland Palmer. Oh, yeah. yeah. Ray Weiss is always a pro. I think Ray, Ray Weiss may have been the best part of the movie. Yeah. Agreed. I think because he was the character that I was most interested in learning more about. Yeah. Uh, and didn't really learn much about him at all. <laughs> I'm still entirely clueless <laughs> as to what exactly was happening yeah. with his character. Yeah. And his uh, being possessed by Bob. Spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, so is it like an on-again, off-again possession, I guess? I mean, there are times where, I mean, you know, due to the fantastic acting of Ray Wise, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you can see the facade, you know, slip, and he becomes what I believe is the real Leland. Yeah. And yeah. then, you know, gets slowly taken over by Bob again. Yeah. You know, and, and, and he's fantastic in doing that. But as far as anything in this movie explaining their relationship, mm-hmm. uh, how it came to be... Uh, is if they explained it, then I missed it entirely. I missed it too, apparently. <laughs> uh, I will say that I'm far more interested in that than the uh, week-long adventures of a horrible person, <laughs> yeah. aka Laura Palmer. Yeah, she's got some problems. Uh-huh. Um, uh, so that, so we knew from the <clears throat> show that she was uh, molested by Bob sure. uh, for years and years. Um, and apparently... Uh, a thing that is learned in this movie uh, is that she didn't know who Bob was. Right. So she didn't know that it was her father yeah. that was possessed by Bob. So that was weird. That was weird. Um, which makes certain things that happen in this show, uh, or in this movie, uh, even weirder. Yeah. Uh, because we do uh, eventually learn the who the murderer of uh, Teresa Banks is. Mm-hmm. I mean, which of course we know it's Bob. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but but we see it happen, and it's Leland, and it's yeah. uh, because uh, he was uh, uh, going off to uh, other town, uh, Deer Meadow. Yeah, Deer Meadow, Oregon. I think right. so. Yeah. Uh, or yeah, yeah, because uh, their 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 base was in Portland. Yeah. Uh, um. Yeah. So so. Leland would go to Deer Meadow and fuck this prostitute, uh, Teresa Banks, and uh, arranged it with her to uh, have some of her friends join them. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of those friends turned out to be Laura. Which uh, was, it, was it? Laura? Yeah. Huh. Okay. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't know if that actually happened, or if that was. <laughs> if well, that was a up, weird vision. <laughs> you bring up an interesting thing. There are a lot of things that happen in this movie that I'm not entirely sure was something that was supposed to be happening or not. Yeah. I do, however, think that that was one of those things that was supposed to have actually happened. Okay. Maybe she was uh, on so many drugs 
when that was happening that she just didn't realize that it was Leland. Well, she never saw Leland. Oh, that's right, but Leland saw her. Yes. Okay. That's and that right. is why he killed Teresa Banks. Okay. Wow. Yes. Okay, so you did get, you got more of this out of this than I did. Okay. <laughs> just apparently a little bit. Because <laughs> I, I may have been texting at that point. <laughs> you were texting a lot. I was. I was coordinating plans for the weekend. Okay. <laughs> There's like five more days to the weekend. I know. <laughs> If we were in a movie theater, I would have yelled at you. That's fair. We are not in a movie theater. Yep. <laughs> so the only person you were annoying was me. Yeah. <laughs> and, and frankly, I'm okay with that. <laughs> I offered you cookies. <laughs> I know they were really good. Thanks, Eric's mom. Hey, no problem. <laughs> I'll pass along the message. Please do. <laughs> uh, okay, so that clears that up a yeah. little bit. Because... Uh, because also the, the, the ring plays yeah. a, a part in this movie. Yeah. Uh, uh, Teresa Banks uh, is shown to have a tan line when she's uh, undergoing her autopsy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, so Chet Diamond is Chet Diamond. Yep. Yeah, Jason <laughs> Isaacs. <laughs> it's actually more Chris like, Isaacs. Uh, Chris Isaacs, that's right. Who's Jason Isaacs? Uh, isn't he? Uh, he's a British actor, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you were about to say something. Oh, no, just uh, his delivery of Chet Diamond would have been much more flat than yeah. what you were saying. Oh, um, Chet Diamond. Chet Diamond. Agent Chet Diamond. Special uh, Agent Chet Diamond. I'm investigating. With FBI. Your... <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, every scene with him dragged. Yeah. And there's a lot of things that in this movie that drag. Yeah. And go on Far too long. This movie is already two hours and twenty minutes as is. Uh-huh. Uh huh. It felt like four. It yeah, it definitely felt longer than it actually was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so so then uh, uh, Special Agent Diamond is investigating the death of uh, Teresa Banks. Teresa Banks. I can remember Teresa. Yeah. I knew Banks. Um, and uh, and he finds underneath her trailer. Was it her trailer? I don't think it was her trailer. I think was it was it? the deputy's trailer. It was the deputy's trailer. Okay, he yeah. finds a little pile of dirt uh, with the ring in it. Yes. Which is similar to the pile of dirt that was found at Laura Palmer's right. murder site with her little necklace in it. Yeah, her her happy necklace. Her, her half-eaten necklace, yes. Happy. Happy. Ha- happy? Happy. Oh, is that what they call it? Nope. No? This, this is what you're calling just it? Just what I am saying. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, and, then, and then immediately at that point, when the investigation gets interesting, <clears throat> is when that storyline ends. Yep. <laughs> we, uh, he disappears. We never hear from uh, Kiefer Sutherland again. Mm-hmm. Uh, Yay! Man, I guess. I mean, in general, Kiefer Sutherland. Oh, okay. Never hearing from him again would be okay. Really? Not, I don't not care. a fan? I don't care for Kiefer, Kiefer Sutherland. I think he's okay sometimes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Not in this. No. Well, he didn't have anything to do in this. No. <laughs> I mean, he did pour coffee in his lap. Sure. And uh, had his machine that he was carrying with him at all times, mm-hmm. which was weird. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah. Oh, and he also, uh, in the worst part of the movie, uh, removed a fingernail from a dead body. Yeah. That was horrible. Well, it's because we had to find the letter underneath it. I know, but you could do that without removing the whole thing. Well, you know, they had a, they got a big special effects budget for this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta use it. Did they? <laughs> it was mostly just flashing lights. They had a bigger special effects budget for this movie than they did for the TV show. Okay. Like 50 bucks more. Yeah. <laughs> they spent that on a really good fake finger. Yep. Fingernail. Yep. That creeped me out. Yes, it did. Uh, but yeah, so they, they, have, they, they have to find the letter, which of course matches, uh, you know, the one that Agent Cooper eventually finds in Laura Palmer's fingernail. Yeah. Uh, and so then we cut immediately to Philadelphia, where, uh, Agent Cooper is, uh, being Agent Cooper. Yeah. Uh, but low-key Agent Cooper. Mm-hmm. Not the Agent Cooper we know and love. Yes. Just 
weird. Lo- wait, Loki Cooper. Agent Cooper? Low. Is it Loki key. in disguise? No. As Agent Cooper? No. Because that'd be cool. No. Because, uh, are you caught up on S.H.I.E.L.D.? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, because he can't be Loki because he's Mr. Hyde. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> what, is he Mr. Hyde, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh-huh. Okay. Because he's a doctor and he's got uh, crazy berserker super strength. Okay. He's Mr. Hyde. I Calvin Zabo. I did not know that. Yep. That's awesome. Yep. <laughs> he's great on that show. He is. I really enjoy him. Anyway, that's all. <laughs> Shows that got actual supervillains occasionally. Yeah, I know, it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow. Uh, uh, yeah. So, he's walking in front of a security camera and then going to the security room and wondering, apparently, why he can't see himself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's really weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, even Agent Cooper weird. Yeah. More, more than weird for him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then, uh, he, go, then, uh, he goes out and, uh, while, well, uh, an elevator door is open and, uh, David Bowie walks in the room. Yeah. And, uh, Agent Cooper goes back into the security room to see himself on camera along with David Bowie. Yeah. A moving David Bowie. <laughs> yes. So, uh, uh, yeah. So that's bizarre. Yeah. What was the point of any of that? <clears throat> I don't know. <laughs> with David Bowie. Uh, he... Was he just a big fan of the show? <laughs> I'm not sure what was happening. Because <laughs> he, he was there, to, and he was talking about something, and Agent Cooper had a dream, and it was the day of the dream or something. Yeah. And then we get a lot of... It was February 16th. February 16th. Which I remember because it's the day after my birthday. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Happy birthday. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, You're a day late. No, oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Merry Christmas. There you go. I'm two days early. <laughs> two days early. Uh, um. So yeah, David Bowie springs into the office and yeah. he's screaming in a terrible Southern accent. Then we get a lot of flashing pictures of uh, the cast of the Black Lodge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Bob the Midgets. The uh, old lady, the, the old cream corn lady, mm-hmm. and the kid. And your grandson, I guess. Yes. Your kid. And, yeah. and then some other weird character with a pointy nose and an afro. Um, yep. <laughs> that, that, That's it. It was there. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. There, and there was some... Uh, and we get our first scene in the movie, our first overtly long scene. Of uh, dialogue being spoken that we can't hear. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because there's there are a lot of scenes where the music is just really loud and you can't hear what people are saying. Yep, because that's movie making. Yeah, <laughs> I did see in the credits that David Lynch was the sound engineer on this movie, so I guess it's on purpose. I guess, but dumb. Very dumb. <laughs> I mean, I. I <sighs> <sighs> Why? Why would you do that? Yeah, I don't know. <sighs> and also, the the one thing that this movie has uh, to, to chalk up into the con column. Mm-hmm. Uh, whenever they're in the uh, what are, I guess what is supposed to be the Black Lodge and in various uh, places. Uh, when, when we see our, our cast of Black Lodge characters, uh, no subtitles. Yeah. Which is, uh, I did not realize that, that would, it would be so helpful to have the subtitles for them. Yeah. Uh, I just, you know, I don't know, you, you read the subtitles and you hear them speak and you're like, well, that's clearly what they're saying. Yeah. But without the subtitles, you're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> made no sense. Yeah. I could and not it, understand a single one of them. And it probably would have helped with uh, not quite as loud music, too. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that was problematic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, so that all happens, and then it doesn't really go anywhere. No, because David Bowie disappears mm-hmm. in front of everybody. Yeah. He was never there. Never there. Um... Of course, this all has to do with uh, Gordon Cole's Blue Rose investigation. Yeah, the Supreme which, Blue Rose, which is which is the 
spinoff TV series, <laughs> Gordon Cole's Blue Rose Investigations. I would watch it. I would too. Yep. <laughs> GCBRI. <laughs> I'm gonna just hope Warren Ellis writes some. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be cool. Good. Super Blue Rose. Yeah, I got yeah. it. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that whole thing was weird, too. Yeah. The woman in the dress. Yeah. <laughs> and this is how he conveys what what uh, cases are supposed to be. I guess so. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, and apparently Gordon's already got, uh, you know, people on the ground pre-investigating investigations. Yeah. Which, uh, why don't they just do the follow-through? And continue that investigation. Yeah. Instead of just, you know, passing along useless information. (laughs) (laughs) That uh, one interaction would have pretty much clued him into uh, everything that that woman, quote unquote, told him. Yeah. Yeah. Instead he has to to be a detective about it. Yep. He has to watch a mime. It's dumb. Watch a freaky mime. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, yeah, we're spending a lot of time on the first, like, 20 minutes of the movie. Well, it's because the first 20 minutes are bizarre Mm -hmm. and, honestly, interesting. Yeah. Because that movie could have gone somewhere. Yeah, that's true. And instead of, you know, uh, you know, us following uh, Agent Cooper and and his journey, uh, we flash forward a year later. Yeah. To Twin Peaks. And things get... Stupid and boring. <laughs> hey, kids, did you know that Laura Palmer's life sucked? Yeah. And then she died? Yep. The end. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> did she ever write down... Uh, cause, so at one point she has a dream uh, when she's on drugs, uh, and she dreams of Annie, yes. uh, Heather Graham's character. And Annie tells her that Cooper is trapped in the lodge uh, and can't get out. Yep. Good, good Cooper, I think is what she says, yep. is trapped in the lodge and can't get out. And tells her to write that down in her diary. Does she ever write that down? I don't think she I does. I don't think she does either. No. Just fucking things up left and right. Pretty much. Uh, so, basically, this movie gives us uh, the idea that uh, Agent Cooper is just forever trapped in the Black Lodge. Yeah. Good Agent Cooper. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that answers those questions. Yeah. And Annie is, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't, I, I don't know either. I didn't even that realize that was only, Annie. That until was her only scene. It was her only scene. She is listed in the main credits. Mm hmm. Uh, unrecognizable. Like, she showed up. I was like, who the fuck is that? <laughs> and then she said her name is Annie, and I thought, who the fuck is Annie? Because <laughs> that is how much of an impression she made. Because <laughs> it has been literally a week. Uh, less it than a week. It has been less than a week. <laughs> and I forgot a major component of the yeah. final episode. Yeah. <laughs> People had to wait two years for this. I think I remembered because I read a bunch about the finale okay. when it when we were finished watching it. Yeah. And so, like, how's Annie is is Cooper's last line. Right. And it's super creepy, so yeah. I had that in my mind. Okay. So, Annie. But, yeah. <laughs> Two years, that would suck. Yeah. Uh, yeah, imagine... Imagine being a fan of this show. Mm-hmm. And then waiting two years for this. I uh, yeah. absolutely see why people would hate this movie. Yeah. On so many levels. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, so we go through like the last week of, of Laura's life. Yep. And it sucks. Yep. And then she dies. Yep. And then at the end, I want to just skip to the end. Um, I was trying to, I was trying to, uh, have there be a reason for this movie to happen? Uh huh. And and so in the last scene we see Agent Cooper and Laura in the red room. Yes. Um. And and I don't. It's a com- it's a silent scene except for a bunch of loud music. Yep. Uh, and an angel appears. And I don't know what the fuck was going on. 
was he like like the thought that I had was oh so he so he was going through all of this with her in the red room so that she could finally uh pass over into the white lodge or whatever wherever heaven is maybe but am i am i giving that too much thought <laughs> or I don't, I don't even, know what I'm doing I here. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know. Um, do, yeah, yeah, I don't... Because... Uh, <laughs> so, so an angel... So during the death scene, or the, the scene of the murder... Yes. Um, uh, you know, it was, it was Laura and Ronette in the train car. Yes. Uh, and they're both tied up. And then an angel appears... I guess yeah. a winged creature <laughs> appears. I would assume an angel. I assume it's an angel, yeah. and uh, and freeze Ronette. Yes, uh, and then she escapes. Yes. What? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, and then the one-armed man is also there. Yeah, uh, sort of helps free her. Anyway, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, for me, you, you talked about you know trying to see anything in this movie that would justify its existence. Yeah. And for me, it would be to perfectly explain the Leland Bob connection, mm-hmm. which it does not. Yeah. At all. Yeah. Or or why Leland had to kill Laura, but, and then why Laura apparently is also Bob. Yeah, that was weird. I don't know. <laughs> Is Bob just the evil that all men do? I guess. And so when Laura is bad, she's Bob? Maybe, but... Uh, but, you know... No, because he's a but, demon. But then there are specific people who are Bob. Yeah. And then Bob is a specific thing unto himself. Yeah. So, but he's also the midget. No, he's not the midget. No. The giant is the midget. No, I I was reading about that, and I guess the, the giant and the midget are not the same. The giant and the old man... In okay. the hotel oh, are the right. same, so the midget is just the midget. The midget's just the midget. Yeah. Was then the midget Bob? I, I don't know because they have s- scenes together. I don't know. <laughs> and who's what's the name of the guy that uh, that is possessing the one armed man? Is it Bill? Uh, Mike. Mike. That's right. Yeah. Who's Mike? I don't know. Who the fuck is Mike? We never get a Mike explanation <laughs> other than other than. Th- Bobby's friend is also named Mike. Yeah, that's true. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Let's talk about Bobby for a second. <laughs> okay. Because he's in this movie, sadly. He is in this movie. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, so, you know, major spoiler for the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bobby kills a guy. Yeah. Just outright murders a dude. Just shoots him in the head. Yep. We see it. Yep. Um, and that is one of those scenes where I was like, well, then... You'd think that that would have been mentioned in the show. Yeah. It was never mentioned. Yeah. Ever. <laughs> uh, and Bobby does not appear to be going through any sort of trauma uh, of, of you know, guilt of having killed a guy. Yeah. And I know he's a bad kid, but, you know, we, we've seen him, you know. I mean, at the moment, he was, you know, expressing regrets and guilt and, and fear. Yeah. And you would think that, you know, the fact that two days later, there are FBI agents investigating him. Yeah. Uh, you know, that would have shown through. Yeah. Uh, so then it makes me question, well, did that scene even ever happen? Yeah, I I had that thought, too, um, during that scene, and then also the scene where Donna is drugged. Right and taken along on one of, uh, one of Laura's uh, sex capades. Well, that to me was that she was drugged, so yeah. she just did not remember that happening yeah. to her. But she's she remembered parts of it. Yeah, but I don't know. Yeah, not not the uh, drugged and almost raped part. Yeah, but so so yeah, thinking about that stuff, sort of because we follow Laura throughout the whole thing. Right. She's basically the the narrator. Is she a reliable narrator? Is cuz she's on drugs so often. Sure. Like yeah. how much of the movie actually happens. Right. And then juggling so many aspects of her life. And then on top of the fact that we do have, you know, 
in continuity, you know, mystical people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> showing up randomly out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, and then that kid in the mask. Yeah. Which, I mean, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cream corn kid. Cream Just corn kid. <laughs> pops up. Is now kid in a mask. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh... <clears throat> But yeah, like even after after Bobby killed the the guy that he killed, yes, uh, who spoiler was a sheriff or was a deputy, yes, uh, in Deer uh, Meadow, Deer Meadow, yes. So he, it, he's the the deputy that gives uh, Chris Isaac some shit, yes, uh, when he first gets to town, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then yeah, he shows up to sell Bobby drugs later, yeah, and Bobby kills him. Um, but even even during that scene when when Bobby is like half-heartedly trying to bury the deputy <laughs> yeah. just by piling dirt on top of him. And and Laura is like, Bobby, you killed Mike. Right. Like, just over and over saying not what actually happened. Right. That's That sort of was like, oh, well, maybe this didn't actually happen either. Right. Mm-hmm. What, what did happen? I don't know. I'm so confused. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that is pretty much where I'm walking away from this movie. Yeah. So confused. Yeah, confusing and pointless. Ultimately. Yes. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it would be one thing if it was confusing, but, like, I had been fascinated through the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I was not. Yeah. There there were times where where I almost napped. Mm -hmm. Uh. (laughs) You did lay down. I did lay down. If there hadn't been cookies, I would not have been paying as close attention. Yeah. Probably. Uh, same here. Because the cookies gave me something to do while we watched the movie. Yeah, and it was a little bit of energy you know, mm-hmm. to, to stay awake uh, through uh, some uh, horrible James stuff. Yeah. yeah, James is in it because he has to be. Yeah, um, <laughs> you know the he shows up like when when they go to the the one year later, mm-hmm. and he shows up to to fuck Laura. Yeah, uh, and then uh, thankfully disappears for the rest of the movie. Yeah, right up until like the last twenty minutes. Mm-hmm. And and just shows up and uh, is just a giant disappointment <laughs> on top of a giant disappointment. Yeah. <laughs> He's a disappointment to everyone. Yes. <laughs> no wonder his parents left him or yeah. are dead. I don't remember. Uh, his mom's an alcoholic. That's right. Yeah. Of course she is. Because <laughs> I would be too if I had to live with James. Oh, man. <laughs> It's <laughs> rough, but accurate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, at least at one point, Laura, uh, she channels the feeling that I have towards James. Yeah. Uh, and uh, gives him the finger. Yeah. Of which I repeatedly have done most times that he has shown up on screen. Yeah, every time he appeared during the movie, for sure. Yeah. Middle finger up. Yep. <laughs> uh, him and the uh, the terrible uh, Roadhouse singer. Mm-hmm. That yeah. is an awful house band. <laughs> <laughs> Why was there no Giants? There was no I wish, Giants. I wish the Giant had been in the movie. Yeah, there was a white horse. There was a white horse. We got that again. Yeah. Uh, Why was there no uh, Dr. Jacoby? That's true, yeah. He and Laura were right. so close, apparently. Right. But uh, he didn't see her for the week before right. she died, apparently. And, uh, and of course, uh, but but we get Harold instead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who gives a fuck about Harold? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, on the show, even he's a total dead end. Yeah. So what purpose? Like, it was like, okay, we got to check off that she gives him the diary. Right. Okay, checked off. Yep. <laughs> A lot of this movie is like, you know, reverse engineering. Mm -hmm. You know, okay, this is what we did in the show. We have to make sure we hit these points. Yeah. Uh, And then even still, like, you know, there are major chunks missing. Yes, none of the horns are in the movie. Yeah. And they played a major role throughout, you know, the entire investigation. You never, they never go to One Eye Jacks. They never go to One Eye Jacks. They never go to the Great Northern. Uh, Horn's department store. Right. Not at all. Where she is supposedly works. Yeah. <laughs> we, we see her go to the diner to deliver, you know, uh, Meals on Wheels. Yeah. Which, which that is established. Yeah. Uh, 
So so we get to see Shelly like twice. Mm-hmm. Norma's in it briefly. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh we we do get to see Shelly get slapped across the face. Yeah. Or backside of the head. Yeah. Which was oddly hilarious. It was just that whole scene of of domestic abuse yeah. was uh uh, just so bad. Yeah. Because <laughs> domestic abuse is not funny. No, not but at all. But that scene was funny because it was a terrible, terrible scene. Yeah. And like everything else in this movie, pointless. Pointless. Totally pointless. Absolutely pointless. Yeah. Um. So yeah, and so then there's a, a, another scene later where uh, basically we, like, we see good Laura up to this point, mm-hmm. and then she suddenly shifts to bad Laura. Yeah. And, uh, she decides to go out whoring. And, uh, and literally, that is what she is doing. Mm-hmm. I am yeah. not being disparaging. No, you are not. That is exactly She's, what she is doing. She is going out to have sex with people for money. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, she meets a dude named Buck, mm-hmm. who sadly does not say that he likes to fuck. <laughs> Yeah. I bet that he does drive a pussy wagon, though. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> we do never see his conveyance. No. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, Laura goes to the roadhouse. Uh, Donna follows her there? Yeah. Yeah, I think Donna follows her there. And, and, then... and somehow gets entangled in all of this, and they go to a secret back room in the roadhouse, mm-hmm. which also... Never previously mentioned. Was it the Roadhouse, or was is the Bang Bang Bar the Roadhouse? Is it the same thing? I don't know. Huh? I don't. I don't. I don't know. Well, the terrible band was at the place, and that's true. Thought they were the Roadhouse. Well, that is the Roadhouse band. Band. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, whatever. <laughs> Who knows? Who cares? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so we get this excruciatingly long scene of music. And, uh, you know, indecipherable dialogue. Mm-hmm. And l- naked Laura Palmer. Yeah. Getting eaten out under a table. Yep. A, a nice foot rub under a table. <laughs> she is getting finger banged. Okay. Finger blasted. That guy's really going to town on those calluses. Yes. <laughs> Just fisting her deeply. Oh! Up to the elbow. Yeah, fisting, like, really kneading into the... <laughs> the arches of her feet with his fists. <laughs> it is She's like throwing really enjoying a it. hot dog down a hallway. Whoa. <laughs> you win. What the fuck are you talking about? Because <laughs> your pussy is so Yeah, I, I, got, I got it. Yeah, okay, I got yeah. it. Uh-huh. That's gross. No elasticity. That's terrible. Just overused. Okay, we're done here. <laughs> Podcast over. <laughs> Uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, so that that was like what twenty minutes? God, maybe forty? I don't know. Felt like it was forever. Maybe it was only eight minutes. I don't. <laughs> uh, all I know is like right before that scene, I, we paused, uh, took a bathroom break, we came back, and I think it was like six o'clock by the time that scene was over. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, so and about twenty minutes. So uh, so about you know uh, four hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, which is weird because the movie is four hours. The movie is four hours, So it's yeah, like this so. weird sort of, you know, timey wimey, yeah, wobbly outside thing. Outside of happening. time and space, yeah, Major yeah. Briggs, yep. alien stuff. Yeah. <laughs> which, of course, is not in this movie. Nope. Fuck you, movie. Yep. <laughs> And none of the none of the police department uh, characters are in it, so no mm. Andy, no sheriff. Yeah. Uh, no Dick Tremaine? Damn it. No Dick Tremaine. <laughs> Uh, no Billy Zane. No Billy Zane. Uh, no, uh, you know, never, never once do they mention that uh, Laura also has an identical twin cousin at any point in this movie. That's true. Uh, Though there are pictures of her all over. <laughs> no, that was just of Laura. What? <laughs> she's she's the blonde one. What? <laughs> um. No, no Pete Martell. Yeah, no, no Martells at all. Yeah, no, no, no Josie. Josie. Uh, no Big Ed. No Big Ed. No, no Nadine. Um, yeah, yeah. 
Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> this movie was not good. It was not good, and I'm disappointed that that this movie is the taste that's left in my mouth. Right. About Twin Peaks. It's, yeah. Because Twin Peaks was so good. Yeah. Uh, at one point. <laughs> For the most part. <laughs> I would say the majority of Twin Peaks held a lot of promise mm-hmm. and was incredibly good. Mm-hmm. And then there was like ten episodes in a row that were awful. Yeah. And then redeemed itself in the last one. And then now we have this. Yeah. Yeah. And like last week I said, you know, the, the series finale... Uh, you know, it really made me want to see the the next Twin Peaks series. Yeah. Uh, after watching this, I'm back to not being sure again. Yeah. <laughs> you mean you don't want more excruciatingly long scenes of people eating cream corn? I uh... <laughs> like close up shots of their mouth. Yeah. As they slurp it off. Of you a see, spoon. you freaked it's out. So gross. You freaked out during the fingernail scene. <laughs> But for me, it was the close-up cream corn. I do not want to see anybody's lips that close. Yeah, eating anything it that was disgusting. Really gross. Yep. And why were they eating cream corn? Uh, <laughs> I, uh, you know, and cream corn is just awful. Yeah. Who eats cream corn? It's terrible. Yeah. Just regular corn. Just eat regular corn. Agreed. You don't have to eat it on the cob. If that's that's yeah. the the issue you're facing, just cut it off. Yep. It's easy. Yep. Corn. Yeah. Canned corn. Bagged corn. Yeah. It's all good. I don't know. Popped corn. Mm-hmm. I enjoy popping corns. I don't. No? No. I worked at a movie theater That's for a That's right. Time. I forgot. Yeah. Have a movie theater thing. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Of course, there, there's also one major absence from this movie, of course, is uh, Mark Frost. Oh, yeah. That's right. He didn't have anything to do with it. Yeah. So, so maybe that is part of the reason. Maybe. Maybe Mark Frost was reining David Lynch in. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I think this might have just been Lynch's shitty periods. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. He's got a lot of shitty periods. He so. does. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, I think we established in the beginning, I've maybe only seen like a handful of his movies, and out of those, I've only liked maybe two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I did confirm that uh, David Lynch and Mark Frost are writing all of the episodes yeah. of the Showtime series, and David Lynch is directing all of them. Yeah. So that's awesome. Yeah, I hope. Yeah. yeah hopefully. Uh, if, and if, it's only nine episodes. Yeah. Which is good. You know, yeah. uh, I think the first season really helped that it was only like eight episodes long mm-hmm. or so. Uh, and it's just one of those things where, you know, I've been thinking about it since last week, is that, uh, you know, we just... American television, I think, really, really needs to take that, uh, you know, tip from, from British television. Yeah. Just yeah. short seasons. Uh, especially if you're doing a show like this. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Where, you know, you're gonna pretty much use up your premise within eight episodes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did, did, have you done any reading about the show since we finished it last week? I have not. I, I read a bunch about it, and I guess originally David Lynch didn't want to reveal at all who had killed Laura Palmer. Okay. Like, eventually that storyline would have just faded into the background as the other character stories came into prominence. Huh. Glad that they didn't do that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> That's a terrible idea. That is a terrible idea. Just ask the uh, producers of The Killing. <laughs> and how people reacted when they did not reveal the killer at the end of the first season. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the other thing of interest that I read uh, was that uh, it was about Audrey and Agent Horn, or Agent Cooper. Yeah. Not Agent Horn. No. Um, uh, I guess that uh, Laura Flynn Boyle was dating uh, Kyle McLaughlin okay. while they were making the show. Huh. And she really didn't want them to do the storyline between Agent Cooper and Audrey. Really? So they changed it. Wow. <laughs> That's why we got Billy Zane and Heather Graham. Laura Flynn Boyle has just made herself a new enemy. <laughs> <laughs> I already didn't like her. Yeah. Uh, not a huge fan of uh, her work on this show or in other things I may have seen her in. Mm-hmm. Uh, Men in Black too. <laughs> did not see that. Nah, you're so. better off. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that may be it for me. Um, yeah, she's terrible. Yeah, she ruined things. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. 
Hmm. Just thought that was interesting. Yeah, it was very weird. I can't. I can't think of any other fun facts okay. that I read. I uh, like. I after this, I definitely want to go back and, and try to at least read anybody else's theory on this movie. Definitely to figure out anything. Yeah, to just any kind of clue that I can have as yeah. to what in the fuck we just sat through. <laughs> <laughs> Other than two hours and twenty minutes of pointlessness. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I still feel it was pointless. Oh, yeah. Yeah, overall. Like, none of this was necessary. Yeah. Uh, it, it makes me curious as to why David Lynch thought a prequel would be the best thing to, to do to carry on the Twin Peaks legacy. Yeah. Because I'm assuming he maybe thought, well, if it's successful, I'll do another or something like that. Mm hmm. But, uh. Yeah. yeah. I, I wonder if it's just that people were clamoring for more Twin Peaks. But none of the people who actually were on Twin Peaks really wanted to come back to do anything. Right. Like, I'm sure if Kyle McLaughlin had been available for more of it, they probably would have focused more on him well, if he had wanted to do it. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't think he wanted to do it. Yeah. 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 Uh, and, and maybe if it would have been then the second season didn't uh, suck so much in so many places. <laughs> That uh, they would have been interested to come back and, and do more. Definitely. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but but instead, this is what we get. Yeah. And uh, and uh, twenty four years later, we're gonna get more Twin Peaks, I guess. Yay. <laughs> which which for us will be a year from now. Yeah. Roughly. Yeah, roughly. A little more than a year. <clears throat> um, oh, I remember other, another fun fact. Too. Uh, it's about Bob. Okay. Uh, Frank Silva, okay. who played Bob. Uh, it was not an actor. All right. I guess that he was like some sort of set designer or some sort of assistant, whatever. Yeah. And, uh, and at one point he, uh, was trapped behind some furniture. <laughs> <laughs> and David Lynch just like shot footage of him trapped behind the furniture. <laughs> and that's, that's the first time that we see Bob at the foot of the bed. In the first episode, or third episode, or whatever. And then I guess uh, there was another point where he just was accidentally in the shot. Like, he was reflected in a mirror during a shot of uh, of Laura's mom. <laughs> and, there were, and people were like, no, that shot's ruined, because Frank's in it. And David Lynch was like, no, let's keep it in! He's going to be the killer! <laughs> yeah. Totally sounds like a David Lynch thing. Yeah. Just <laughs> randomly putting things in movies. It also means that uh, the outfit that he wears is throughout just his is clothes. just his clothes. That <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, may also explain why he has no lines. Yeah. Yeah. Ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can you, right. can you imagine just seeing that guy on the street <laughs> dressed like that, right? With, like, mangy hair and and a crazy look? Because that's just how he looks, <laughs> right? really. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I'd be, I'd step away. Yeah. I would step I'd away. Across the street. Yep. Yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah. Fun facts. Fun facts. David Lynch is a weirdo. <laughs> Fun fact. <laughs> I, think, I think everybody knew that. Okay. But that's yeah. a good fact. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, yeah. Twin yeah. Peaks, Firewalk with me. Twin Peaks is over. It is. So, uh, next week we'll be back with uh, our episode of Psych. Yes. The, the tribute episode to Twin Peaks. Yes. Uh, I believe that's on Netflix. I believe it's a fifth season episode. And it's called Dual Spires. All right. So uh, out there in listener land, you can watch that with us. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, so we're, we're, we're officially done with Twin Peaks. So. Mm-hmm. And uh, overall thoughts? I mean... Uh, overall thoughts, I really liked the stuff that I liked. <laughs> <laughs> no, the first, the first season, all of the Laura Palmer stuff... Uh, 
on the show yeah was great yeah i really liked all of that stuff um even yeah. even you know four or five episodes after they solved her murder uh the stuff with david Duchovny and and cooper's suspension and stuff like that yeah was all quality stuff um yeah once they once they got away from that and got into the more ridiculous parts dave Tremaine. Yeah, Dick Tremaine, uh, Billy Miss, Zane, Miss Twin Peaks, Billy Zane, yeah. uh, Nadine in high school, Wendy Merle, Wendy Merle, uh, ultimately a dead end. Wendy yep. Merle, which was disappointing. Yeah, uh, um, Leo Johnson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all of it. Yeah, terrible. Oh, I did read that uh, in the finale. David Lynch, uh, David Lynch did an uncredited rewrite on pretty much the whole episode. Okay. Um, I guess originally the Wyndham Merle was in a lot more of the Black Lodge scenes, and there was a lot of dialogue, and he just said it was all wrong. So he rewrote all of it and brought back all of the other characters that were from the Black Lodge and, and Madeline and uh, Leland and Laura and all of them. So, so yeah, that that stuff from the finale... Was all David Lynch, so that's cool. That that is cool. It, yeah, it seems like he was uh, trying, maybe too late, to uh, correct the ship to pay attention. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. But well, but yeah, finale was awesome. Uh, I am still looking forward to seeing the the Showtime miniseries. I'll definitely check it out for sure. Uh, yeah, just just because we did invest so much time and <laughs> the good parts of it were really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, but unfortunately, the bad parts were really bad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't watch this movie. Yeah. <laughs> if you if you are thinking about it, because I know it's not as readily available as the TV show is, because right. it's all on Netflix. Uh, if you're thinking about going out to find Firewalk with me to watch it, don't bother. Yeah. You're you can, better. You're fine without it. Give it a miss. Yeah. Uh, or read the summary on Wikipedia if you really need to know what happened. Pretty much, because, uh, I mean, yeah, they, they already pretty much explained what happens to Laura at the time of her death and leading up to it, so yeah. really no reason to watch this movie. Yeah. Unless you just want to really be frustrated about what happened to Chet Diamond. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> or if you really want to see uh, Cheryl Lee Topless a lot. Sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's always fun. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Sure. Okay. Yeah, she's a she's a pretty lady. She's an attractive lady. Yeah, very nice boobs. <laughs> yep. Very nice boobs. Very nice boobs. <laughs> that is how I'm ending this episode. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Shirley has very nice boobs. We'll be back next week with Psych. Dule Hill has nice boobs. Yes, he does. He's a very handsome man. He is. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you for listening to The View Masters. You can subscribe to the show directly at view.guttertrash.net or at iTunes and leave us a review. Visit view.guttertrash.net for email information and links to Facebook and Twitter. We'll see you next time on The View Masters.